the shape of the um, distribution we're, that we want to assume. So it's it's important when you this is an important first step when you're doing an analysis to try to understand whether the assumptions of the model are met. Okay. So so this is what we looked at so far is distributions, and we've looked a little bit about our data. We looked at how to understand distributions, how to generate random values from our distributions. But what we often want to do is, uh, well, when people say, run the statistics on the data, what, what they mean is do inferential statistics. So here's a pop quiz. What is a statistic? What's the definition of a statistic, do you think? A description of a group of numbers? <coughs> That's true, yes. <laughs> it, it's uh, the best definition I have of a statistic is it's a function of data. Anything that satisfies that definition is a statistic. And so if you're a sports fan, you will know all types of statistics and maybe think that those statistics are not the same statistics that academic statisticians use, but they're the same thing. The, the ERA is just a function of data. The RBIs are a function of data. The YAKs, whatever, the, the win percentage, whatever you want to calculate on an athlete is just, um, you take the data you observe and do something to it. You take those numbers and maybe find the best one. You know, that, you maybe find the worst one. You maybe find the average. Um, but that's all, that's all a statistic is. That's what a statistic is. But what we usually care about when we, when, when we run a, a scientific study is not just the, the statistics in general, which tell you descriptively what happened. We care about making inferences. We care, and, and so the reason why we have this random variable, which is a model of our data, is so that we can make inferences. And the inference goes like this. Up there in the world, there is a true model. And it generated the data I see. I want to know what that true model is, to know whether whatever I see is enough to convince myself that the same thing is true up there. <coughs> so think about sampling for the election. We have, you know, we have survey after survey, who do you want to vote for? And there is, in some sense, a true, you know, for any state or, or the country, there is a true number of all the people who were going to, you know, on November 7th or 11th or whatever it is, what button do they push? There's a true number there. And right now we're trying to estimate that. So we're trying to make inference based on asking 500 people what, what 30 million people would do. If they had enough resources, someone could in theory sample 30 million people every day, and then we wouldn't have to do inferential statistics at all. Um, you know, but we've decided as, that what we're gonna do is just sample 60, I don't know, 50, 60 million people once every four years, and that that's how we're going to decide on things. So what they're, and all of this stuff with likely voter models and, and registered voter models are all about making inference about what's going to happen that day. So we, we say we're going to collect data, and we're going to use a model, which is um, some type of random variable, to estimate what, what generated that data, and then ask ourselves, is, um, is that, what is the, what, what can we infer about the true population based on what we observed? So that's what inferential statistics are. And the first step of inferential statistics is parameter estimation. So, um, so the first thing you might want to say is, I sampled this <coughs> people in this uh, poll, and I want to know what my estimate of the true support for Hillary Clinton is. 
So I'm taking my numbers and I'm trying to make an estimate of of the of, of, of some aspect of the distribution. So if you think about the big picture, when you are doing statistics, if it's a t-test or an ANOVA or something more complicated where you're reporting a p-value, what you're doing is you start by sampling data from some hypothetical, uh, hypothetical population, and then you're trying to infer based on some, of the, some math what the true values of the population are based on what you've observed. So that's why it's infer inference. You're inferring from a sample about the population. And we're going to spend the rest of the time today, I think, focusing on parameter estimation. So. <coughs> Um, in general, we don't know what that, the true distribution, the true generating process is. Um, so we make a model of it, and then we try to, um, we try to infer the parameters of our model based on our data. But how do we do that? We've got things we've observed, and then we say, well, I think it, w it came from a model like this. How do we go from our data to the model? That's what parameter estimation is, because these, um, um, for any distribution that's interesting, it's going to have a parameter or one or more parameters that we can, that we try to figure out what is the most likely or best or more most robust value or values of that parameter that could have generated the data I observed. So. Um, As an example, we're going to use this little data set. Um, which is some weird distribution. So it starts at a uniform distribution, and then I multiply it, and I add it, and I square it, and it raises the fifth power, and add normal. We don't know what it really is, but it's, it, it, it's some strange distribution. And it could have arisen because of any process. And we're going to say, um, and if we want to look at it, you know, it looks, it happens to look like this, which is not too, uh, which is pr probably fairly close to a normal distribution. But who knows what it is. So let's say we want to model this with a normal distribution. It turns out it isn't, because I know exactly the distribution that generated it. The distribution <coughs> that generated is this weird combination of products and sums of normal and uniform, things like that. But we're going to say, you know, it seems reasonable to model this with a, with a normal. If I do a QQ norm of this, well, it's pretty straight. So it's, it's not really a normal distribution, but it's close enough that we're going to say that let's, this came from some process. 